What if, instead of plan B and abortions, we had hysterectomies? We already do, but plan B is a much better option than sterilization, if you ask me. And it's also a better option than terminating your baby just because you don't feel like being a mother. Because if you're not mature enough to choose your partner, or mature enough to keep a baby alive, maybe it shouldn't be your choice. Well, that's a lot of The part about plan B? Yeah, it is. The part about a lot of women not making a mature decision about who they procreate with? He's right. But you don't care about life, because if you did, you wouldn't be suggesting something like permanent sterilization for women, which wouldn't actually result in reducing much for abortions. But let me guess, sterilizing men would be a much better option, right? But what would would be vasectomies. Oh gee, who would have thought? The hypocrisy, <laughs> Willie, is so amazing. Because as one of my doctors once told me, it makes more sense for vasectomies, because it's smarter to unload that pew pew than to trust that the bulletproof vest is going to work. Which is why I know you don't about life. You just care about controlling women. You also think women are to blame for all these pregnancies, taking no accountability for men, claiming it's because we don't choose a better partner or we're not mature enough to keep a child alive? Bingo! Yahtzee! Well, it's a good thing that a fetus isn't a baby. Actually, it is. But, sweetie, I have a much better idea. How about they give you full abortion again by codifying Roe v. Wade into federal law, but also they codify men's reproductive rights too, as in the ability to waive child support along with waiving their parental rights to that child, which, in effect, would be the male equivalent of abortion, but it would be social and financial instead of physical. What? You see... If you remove the potential of child support, the amount of women that would be using the Emperor's shield religiously and the amount of vetting they would do before actually procreating with a man would make Roe v. Wade pretty much redundant. But that's never gonna happen, because the moment Roe v. Wade becomes federal law, it stops being a voting issue, and it also stops being a controversial topic that brings in outrage clicks from bitter women, which means... TikTokers like you would go out of business. Excuse me. Could I give you some attention for just a second? No. I told him that he has to become a billionaire. And when I told him that, you know, there was screaming and angry at me. How can you demand this of me? You don't know what it takes to push and shove and hammer. When's enough enough for you? Why can't you just be happy? Because some women have a pathological obsession with luxury. That's why. And I was like, I'm happy, dude. Happy just running around. I don't need Chanel. She says so confidently while wearing designer clothes and shoes. The hypocrisy, <laughs> Willie, is so amazing. I don't need anything to be me, Grant. You know that. So I told him you have to become a billionaire. Why did I do that? Because of this. You wanted a prenup. Yeah. And she says, nope, I'm not getting a prenup. And then you said, okay. Yeah, that's true. Sam! 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 Why did you agree at that time? I'll find out whether this was the right thing to do or not. <laughs> But a lot of things in my life are still to be played out. And that could be one of the but, most expensive yeah. decisions I ever made in my life. What would you say to your daughter? Assume she you're would getting definitely married. get a prenup. But uh, it's the yeah. love of her life. And he yeah. says, I don't want a prenup. I'm not getting married. She will absolutely get a prenup. Ironic. How is your wife different in that scenario? We never dreamed we would be where we're at right now. There's four or five billion dollar real estate. There's 11 companies that are probably worth three or four billion. I never thought ever in my lifetime we would be where we're at, mm -hmm. but we are. And she has participated, and I hope this is never used in a court of law <laughs> <laughs> against me. But I mean, in a deposition, I would have to say, yeah, dude, she participated. She's been a phenomenal partner childbirth these two guys without drugs at home without us bringing them to yeah, hospital she's a fucking warrior yeah. man all that being said it still ain't worth half what all that being said it still ain't worth half you sure about that you sure about that you sure about that so in case you need that translated she demanded that grant cardone become a billionaire so she would get the billions that grant cardone made in the divorce without having to make those billions herself just like most female billionaires who become billionaires by divorcing the men who made the billions and the thing is grant knows he messed up on the prenup but there's nothing he can do about it now it's sad isn't it being on social media, I have spent years just 
reading thousands and thousands and thousands of comments and DMs from other women who've gone through divorce. And whenever I get this question, why didn't you get half? It just makes my brain explode. I didn't get half because statistically women get screwed over in divorce. Lies! Period. As a stay-at-home mom, I didn't have money for a divorce attorney. I had a terrible divorce attorney. I put most of my attorney's fees on a credit card that I'm still paying off today. He had all the money, so he had incredible representation. Here's some statistics that my crap divorce attorney shared with me. Less than 40% of child support ever gets paid, and when it does, it's usually not on time. Some of it, it takes years to collect. Deceptions! Less than 17% of spousal maintenance alimony gets paid. Every day, more lies. Yeah, and the men who went to prison for being late on alimony or child support say that statistic is BS. Indeed. You know, a lot of divorce attorneys take payment when the divorce is finalized, and usually their payment is a huge chunk of the assets that the wife gets, which are then converted into money to pay off the lawyers. Quite a few times, more than half of what the wife gets goes to the lawyers. That's one of the reasons why divorce is a multi-billion dollar industry in the West. If you got a terrible divorce lawyer, it's probably because the good ones realized your ex-husband's assets are too well protected for them to be able to F him over. I spent more on my crappy divorce attorney than I got in the one alimony payment that my ex-husband made and child support in the first three years after my divorce. Literally what I just said earlier, the people who have the most gain out of divorce are divorce lawyers. It took three years before I broke even from what I spent on my crap attorney. And I hear the same thing from so many women. Very seldom do I have a woman who says, oh, I got half in the divorce, I was taken care of, the court ordered him to pay the attorney's fees, and my life is great because I get alimony and child support. I literally never hear that. So here's specifically why I didn't get half of everything in my divorce, because when I had to end my 24 year marriage because my brutally violent ex-husband was going to end my life eventually. Yeah, but I'd like to hear his side of the story before I hashtag believe you. Also, before I hashtag believe you, I'd like to know if you ever proved beyond a shadow of a doubt, preferably with a forensic medical report, that your ex-husband was violent with you or the children. You know, to justify your claims about your life being in danger. And that night, I caught him picking up a 19-year-old worker. He immediately drove to the bank, took out all of the money, every single penny that was in his bank account, and I never recouped it. The court didn't give it back to me. And if he put that money in his mother's name, the court couldn't do jack squat about it. The shit's chess, it ain't checkers. Within three days of our marriage ending, I would be at Trader Joe's and not be able to pay for a $43 bag full of groceries. The day after that, I would have to walk to a neighbor's house and ask if they could give me a $20 bill that I'd never be able to pay back so that I could pack gas in my car and drive my kids to school. We were renting a condo. There was no house to divide, no property to split up. So a couple months after our marriage ended, he uh, canceled the lease and had me and the kids evicted. And you greet this as revelation. I'm sorry. Were you expecting him to pay rent on a house he was no longer allowed to live in? <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> Sweetie, newsflash, a trad husband is financially responsible for his stay-at-home trad wife only if they're married. You divorced him, therefore, he's no longer responsible for your housing. At that point, I started sleeping in my vehicle, and the kids had all of their stuff in little Rubbermaid boxes, and they, like, all of their clothes and all of their schoolwork and things like that, and they just, like, bounced from one friend or cousin's house to the next. I would eventually completely max out my credit card by putting VRBOs and motels on it, so that I would just have a home for me and my kids. I am still paying those credit cards off to this day. Just had a $300 payment come out of my account earlier. My ex-husband only paid alimony one time ever since our divorce. What he did was, first of all, he had a mother that was living in a nursing home and he took her out of the nursing home even though she has Alzheimer's and dementia and had her move in with him during the pandemic so that, oh, I'm taking care of my mom. I can't work and there's a pandemic going on. So he went three years without a job claiming only $700 a month. It was to the point where I was about to owe him a little bit of child support for the two days a month that he had my son. 
Outstanding. When I finally got to the break-even point, I was leaving um, a four-hour round trip away from my ex. So most of the tiny amount of child support that I do receive every month actually is barely enough to pay for gas for transporting my son back and forth. And let me tell you, I have heard way worse stories than mine. It is absolutely ridiculous for us to even have this system at all. I think that alimony should be illegal. I don't think that we should even do this. Women should just have their own lives, their own jobs, their own independent finances. Education, career, resources. And I absolutely agree with you. Also, they should use those resources on their husbands and kids because that's what gender equality is all about. And also, a woman making an equal amount of money as her husband means that she wouldn't get much in the divorce and therefore she has less incentive to file for divorce just to get cash and prizes. A working spouse should be legally obligated to put money into a savings account for their stay-at-home partner that becomes the property of just that stay-at-home partner should they divorce. No, you go get a job. Because this system of depending on a crazy ex-husband who wants you not even to be here anymore and definitely doesn't want to pay you a penny, and that's the guy who's supposed to pay your rent, it's ridiculous. I literally get dozens of DMs every single week from women of all ages who are either getting ready to file for divorce, need to file for divorce, or have gotten divorced and can't financially take care of themselves. A man is not a plan. Let's all stop breeding with narcissists. And just for context, and in case you missed episode 478, this is how the narcissist treated her when she was married to him as a stay-at-home mom. For 24 years, I lived in million-dollar homes. I vacationed all over the world. I spent my summers in Hawaii. I could buy myself $500 jeans, diamond tennis bracelets. We had boats and RVs and whatever I wanted. Bruh. Now, sweetie, to some extent, I get it. Maybe he wasn't the best guy for you, but you chose to marry him and be a stay-at-home wife instead of finishing college and being a career boss babe. I think because being a career boss babe, you would have never been able to afford $500 jeans, diamond bracelets, and living in million-dollar homes all by yourself. But the thing is, you married that guy in a religious ceremony, as you yourself commented. And I don't know if you're aware, but... Eternal covenants means forever, until death do you part, for better or worse. Eternal covenants doesn't mean until you involve the secular power of the state to undo what religion united, but still live this lifestyle you did before on the ex-husband's money while you're free to ride the carousel. Proper garden tool. What you're feeling right now are the consequences of your own actions, and considering your ex-husband beat the system, all you can do is... Man up and face your responsibilities! And ladies, if you take anything away from this story, realize that being a gold digger doesn't make you immune to taking L's. And that's the bottom line, cause don't go censor! <laughs>